Hello everyone, welcome to Sangam Tutorials, SP Gubi Online Classes. So this is a platform for uh, educational videos on online in YouTube channel. So if you want to watch more uh, more videos on uh, the subjects like mathematics and science, you have to subscribe to the channel and uh, you can watch the videos. So these videos are for both the SLC and uh, uh, CBSE. So those who are uh, watching this channel, please uh, have a WhatsApp uh, uh, contact with me so that I can uh, send you the day's notes and uh, required updates. So today we are in uh, a challenging situation regarding the coronavirus. We are all, uh, you are all well aware of it. So it is a challenging situation for both uh, students, parents as well as uh, teachers. So apart from this, we have to go with our academic uh, uh, goals also, we have to reach them. So in order to reach our uh, teachers academic goals as well as the students academic goals, uh, we have to get an awareness about it. So all over uh, the all over the students community lot of online classes are going on so it is our small effort to reach students through these youtube and online classes so according to the famous quotation of swami vivekananda so you should have awareness and you should have consciousness so this awareness and consciousness should go together until we reach the goal so the quotation is in this form given by Swami Vivekananda, arise away and stop not until your goal is reached. The second thing is, it comes regarding concentration. How to concentrate the entire academic year and how to deal with this situation. So in order to go with this, you have to be well aware of it and uh, the concentration is very important. So how to concentrate? That's very important. That's given in this quotation. So all power is within you. You can do anything and uh, everything. So according to Swami Vivekananda, so we are when we are born, we are having the power of power to deal with any situations which comes in our uh, life. So we have that power. You have that power. Everybody has that power. We have to utilize that power, and we should reach our goals. So one has to concentrate. So entire academic year we have to concentrate on the syllabus. We have to concentrate on what we are learning. So how to concentrate that plays a very important role. So according to Swami Vivekananda I mean, do one thing at a time and while doing it put your whole soul into it. The exclusion of all else. In the sense live everything. Live everything, put everything. Concentrate only on the syllabus what you are studying, think about it, practice it and get a good grip on the concept. So ultimately this is the statement which applies for everybody including uh, me, students, everybody, every person in the community. So that is you are the creator of your own destiny. So every day how you deal with the things? Every day how you take the challenges, so according to that, your destiny is decided. If you are working very hard, you get very colorful results. If you are working very hard, you are going to get a lot of knowledge, so you will be successful in life. So welcome again to both the category of students, that is NCIT State Syllabus students and also CBSC students. So here I am with the, the very important part of the class. Maybe I have entered into your uh, in standard syllabus. So according to this, we have uh, on board I have some contents of the mathematics syllabus, which is common for both NCRT state syllabus and also for CBSE. It's a common syllabus for both of them. So all teachers who are teaching state syllabus and CBSE will be teaching these concepts for 
mathematics in 10 standard classes. So first of all, I would like to come with the real numbers. It's a continuation chapter of 9th standard. So until 9th standard, you have learned regarding the irrational numbers, just an introduction to that. So after that, you are, you are going to come forwards. It's a developmental uh, chapter. So which develops into real numbers, the combination of rational and irrational numbers taken together, they are called real numbers, you will know about it. So you are, will be more dealing with real numbers in this and you will come across some lemmas connected to Euclid's where you are going to enjoy that. The second chapter is polynomials, again it is a continuation chapter from uh, polynomials chapter from your lines and syllabus. So in this chapter you are going to come across the types of uh, polynomials again once again which will be a recapitulation of the ninth standard chapter. So different types of polynomials, degree of polynomials, you know it. So you will be dealing more with the uh, polynomials in 10th standard chapter again. Pair of linear equations in two variables. So pair of linear equation in one variable you have come across in your ninth standard class. So in 10th you will be coming across linear equation in two variables. So types of linear equation in two variables, their applications, everything you are going to see in this. So regarding quadratic equations, in your 8th standard you are studying regarding the linear equations. So in 10th you will be studying regarding quadratic equations, very important chapter uh, where every sort of mathematics in your higher classes or maybe where you will be doing the engineering or whatever the higher studies you do, you come across quadratic equations. So in these chapters you have to learn how you are going to solve quadratic equations in different methods and how you are going to apply these quadratic equations in your daily life. Next is the uh, most uh, fascinating chapter and uh, that the chapter which never ends that is mathematical progressions. So in this chapter it is a new concept where uh, I don't have anything uh, related to your uh, main standard. So it is a very new concept. Maybe Today I will be starting with the uh, arithmetic progressions and a small beautiful introduction related to this. Next is uh, similar triangles. So regarding congruency of triangles you are learning in your 8th standard syllabus and also in 9th standard syllabus but in 10th you are going to learn regarding similarity of triangles, similarity of polygons so which will be very interesting. Some very important theorems you are going to come across uh, followed by writers identities and uh, various proofs regarding the similar triangles. Coordinate geometry again, you have to say a continuation chapter from your mind. So you had uh, very good basics in coordinate geometry in your mind. So that is going to continue with uh, some very important formulas like uh, uh, section formula, distance formula, some derivations are there. We will be dealing with that. Introduction to trigonometry. So very fascinating chapter. Uh, very important, you, uh, you will love it, learning it. And uh, the concept what you are what you are going to learn in uh, the introduction to trigonometry, you are going to apply the same in the application of uh, trigonometry, a very important chapter, very important concept in mathematics where uh, these concepts are going to get applied in your higher studies as well as in all branches of mathematics. Circles, again a continuation chapter from your nine which will be associated uh, with some theorems and simple problems. Constructions, so it is your uh, skill work, very simple constructions you are going to do, connected uh, to circles and uh, similar triangles. Areas related to circles, so a combination of polygons related to circles will be, uh, you are going to come across, you are going to solve problems on that, uh, it will be very interesting. Surface areas and volumes, again, uh, uh, chapter called mensuration, you can call it as mensuration. Same chapter which is developed from your uh, 9th standard syllabus. So in 9th you are learned regarding uh, uh, cubes, cuboids, and then uh, cylinders, cones, uh, regarding the surface areas and volumes. In this uh, chapter we are going to uh, combine all these solids and study some special properties related to that. Surface, next is statistics, again a continuation chapter from your uh, ninth. Uh, here we are going to deal with the mean, median and uh, mode 
along with uh, some graphical uh, content. So it's a very fascinating chapter and very important for your uh, examinations. Probability, very a chapter where you enjoy a lot at the end. Uh, a lot of application problems are going to come in this uh, chapters. So these are the key chapters you are going to come in this, come across in this academic year of mathematics. So coming to arithmetic progressions, this is the chapter I am going to start from today, giving a very small introduction to this. So this is the flow chart for the arithmetic progressions. So for every chapter in mathematics, where they are going to come across. So before that, I will be giving you a flow chart where it will be in a bird's eye view of the entire chapter in this, uh, that's called a mind map. So in uh, for arithmetic progressions, this is the mind map. So this uh, flow chart, maybe you are not able to see this very clearly. So I am going to send you this uh, through the WhatsApp uh, to your members. So in this arithmetic progressions, you are going to come across arithmetic, uh, what is an arithmetic progression, basically you have to understand that. And after that you are going to come across uh, the basics of uh, AP, that is arithmetic mean. Then comes the nth term formula for an arithmetic uh, progression. Then comes the sum of the n terms of an arithmetic progressions. We are going to come across some two different types of formulas used at different criteria, and then some application, very important application problems related to AP, short form of arithmetic progressions. So this chapter uh, maybe if your student is very good in solving all the problems in the chapter, maybe is just. 50% uh, ready for the chapter that's all because as we are having n number of APs, infinite number of APs, a teacher can frame, anybody can frame n number of problems on arithmetic progressions. So according to me, arithmetic progressions starts in this academic year but it never ends. It's a very big chapter, problems are infinite. So before uh, starting arithmetic progressions, usually what uh, the teachers do in the schools or some uh, institutions where they do, what the fault they do is, they directly start the arithmetic progressions uh, without knowing the basics of arithmetic progressions. So basically, any student who is going to learn arithmetic progressions, first he has to learn what is a sequence, that's the basic of arithmetic progressions. Just like you are going to learn English, the basic is the alphabets, right? Just like that, before learning arithmetic progressions, you have to learn and clearly understand the concept that is sequences, which is uh, earlier, earlier required for learning arithmetic progressions. So it is the previous knowledge required for learning arithmetic progressions. So from uh, apart from the textbook, I am coming just coming out of the textbook. First, I am going to teach you what is a sequence, and uh, next I am going to teach you the types of sequences, and next I am going to uh, introduce you to the nth term of a sequence, and then we will be solving some very simple. Uh, problems related to sequences. Students, now we will learn what is a sequence. Basically, what is a sequence? So, in order to learn what is a sequence, you have to come across certain number patterns. So, let us go one by one. Let us analyze certain number patterns and uh, let us see how a sequence is developed. For example, I will write a number pattern. For example, I will take 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. See, so this is a number pattern here. 1 comes from nowhere, from nowhere, 1 comes, then I write 3, then I write 5. Then I, I write 7. So can you guess the next 3 numbers which are possible to come in this number patterns? 
Okay, next comes maybe 9, next comes 11, and next comes 13. So it looks very easy. So why it looks easy because when I wrote 1357, you understood the pattern of the numbers. In a sense, you understood the rule which is being followed while writing these pattern of numbers. So you can guess. After writing 1, I added 2 to this 1 and I, write, I wrote 3. Then I added 2 to 3. Then I got 5. Then I added 2 to 5. Then I got 7. And you start guessing that. So when we add 2 to 7, you get 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. And 11 plus 2 is 13. And so on. This pattern continues. Such type of patterns are called as sequences. Sequences are of three types. There are three types of sequences. One is an arithmetic progression. Another comes is a geometrical progression. Another third one is harmonic progression. So in, in the text and syllabus, we are going to only deal with arithmetic progressions only. So in this pattern, there is a definite rule. There is a definite rule and it is written in an order. They follow two things. The sequence follows two things. One is it is written in an order and it follows a rule. So I will write the rule here. So what is the rule followed in this sequence is write one. Write one. That's what I told you. One comes from somewhere, anywhere, I don't know. It came into my mind, I wrote it as one and I started adding two to that. So write one and add two successively is the rule. Write one add, and add two successively is the rule. So this forms, this pattern of numbers form a sequence. Because it's, it, it has an order, order in a sense, it is in the ascending order or maybe it is in the descending order, it follows and it is written according to a definite rule. So it has order and also it has rule. Therefore it is a sequence. This pattern of numbers can be called as a sequence. I will go with another example. Let me give you example 1. I will go with example 2. Okay, I will write uh, uh, 1, I will write uh, 3, I will write uh, 9, I will write 27, and so on. In this pattern of numbers, can you guess the rule which is applied? So it's very simple again. I write 1, multiply that 1 by 3, I get the second that is the second uh, number in the pattern that is 3. I again multiply 3 by 3, I get 9. And I again multiply 9 by 3, I get 27. Now you can easily guess the fourth number in this pattern. So what will be the fourth number? 27 into 3. That comes to 54. So next two terms you can guess in the same manner or pattern. So this forms a sequence. Because it is written according to, a, according to a rule and also it, it follows an order, right? So shall I write the rule here? The rule in this sequence is write 1 and multiply 3 successively is the rule of life. This forms a sequence. This forms a sequence. Okay, I will go with some example 2. So example 3. I write 1 by 2. I write uh, 2 by 2. I write 3 by 2. I write 4 by 2. I write 5 by 2. Dash, dash, dash. Can you guess the next three terms? Can you guess the rule here which is applied in this pattern of numbers? Very simple. Write 1 by 2. Add 1 to the numerator successively is the rule. 
It's very simple. Write one by two. Add one to the numerator successively. So write one, one by two. One added to one, that is two. Two by two. Two plus one is three. Three plus one is four. Four plus one is five. And it is followed by two. So next three terms you can easily write it. That comes six by two. Next is seven by two. And next is eight by two. So this forms another sequence type of sequence. So what is the root formula here? Write one by two and add one to numerator. So like this, in your consideration, in your thinking, how many rules can be made using natural numbers, using whole numbers, using rational numbers, using irrational numbers, using real numbers, how many rules you can frame? You can frame infinite number of rules. So if you are able to frame infinite number of rules, then you can write infinite number of sequences. So how many sequences are there? Nobody knows because sequences are not finite. In the sense, as the number of rules are infinite, you can frame infinite number of different types of sequences. So in this pattern of numbers, there is a definite, these pattern of numbers are written according to a definite rule and they are in an order and this makes the definition for a sequence. So, dear students, what is a sequence? You are in a position to answer this. You are in a position to give a definition for a sequence. So, a sequence can be defined as, right, an orderly arrangement of numbers according to a given rule can be called as a sequence. Right. So, in a According to the definition, a sequence is an orderly arrangement of numbers according to a given rule. Let us take another example and go a little bit deep into a sequence. For example, let us take uh, 3 and uh, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, dot, 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 dot. So it is a sequence. Is that a sequence? 3, the number. I am going to add 2 to this. I get 5. 5 added to 2 is again 7. 7 added to 2 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 plus 2 is 30. There is a definite rule and it is following a certain pattern. It is an order. It's in order. So, in this sequence, this is the first term. The number which appears in the first place of the sequence, the number which appears in the first place of the sequence is called the first term of the sequence and usually generally is denoted by A1. So here A1, 1 indicates the subscript, the subscript of the term indicates the position of the term in the sequence. One indicates the position of the term in this sequence. So here, similarly, 5 can be written as A2 because 5 is the second term in the sequence. That is, the number which appears at the second place of the sequence is called as the second term of the sequence. So similarly, 7 can be called as A3, 9 can be called as A4, 11 can be called as A5 and 30 can be called as A6 and so on. So in this case, what is A1? So A1 is 3, again A2 is 5, A3 is 7, A4 is 9, A5 is 11 and A6 is 30. So this is how we are going to determine or denote the terms of a sequence. First. Okay. Let us go with another sequence. 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 comma 10 comma dot 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 dot. Can I 
call it as a sequence yes so we have written even numbers yes a set of even numbers pattern of even numbers forms a sequence pattern of odd numbers form a sequence so here 2 is taken 2 is added to 2 we get 4 4 is added to 2 we get 6 6 is added to 2 we get 8 and 8 is added to 2 you get 10 and the process continues so there is a definite pattern in this sequence so here a1 is 2 a2 is 4 a3 is 6 a4 is 8 and a5 is 10 according to the sequence so here here the sequence continues and continues further so I have particularly I have a term here that is a I am going to indicate the last term of the sequence as a m so here a m indicates the nth term of the sequence nth term nth in the sense is the last term of the sequence and also it indicates the general term of the sequence so nth term has two characteristics one it indicates the last term last term of the sequence and also it indicates the general term of the sequence so here in this case nth term where n is a natural number n can take the place of any natural number if n is equal to 1 here it becomes the first term that is 2 if n is equal to 2 here it is going to become the second term that is 4 if n is equal to 3 then it becomes the third term that is 6 therefore it is called the general term of the sequence and as well as if n is equal to in sense if this sequence has 10 terms then you are going to get n is equal to 10 which indicates the last term of the sequence so an generally indicates the last term as well as the general term in different scenarios in different criteria now we will go with the next subconcept in sequences that is general form of a sequence so here a1 indicates the first term a2 indicates the second term a3 indicates the third term a4 indicates the fourth term and so on and if this sequence has the last term then it is indicated by a n so this is the general form of a sequence where a1 is first term second term third term fourth term and this is the nth term or the general term of sequence where n stands for any natural number starting from 1 so here the next concept is a finite sequence finite sequence so what is the meaning of the word finite finite in the sense it is countable so if a sequence has countable number of terms or finite number of terms then it is called a finite sequence for example 3 comma 6 comma 9 comma 12 comma 15 full stop so this is a sequence having finite number of terms where you can count or you know how many terms are there in that sequence therefore it is called a finite sequence so it has 1 2 3 4 5 terms therefore it becomes n is equal to 5 there are 5 terms in the sequence and the general form of the sequence can be known as a1 comma a2 this is a2 this is a3 and usually you can write it as an where 15 represents the end term of the sequence so this is the general form of a finite sequence so in the general form of finite sequence you will be having the you will be having the end term next we will go with another type of sequence that is infinite sequence so in the infinite sequence we will not be knowing how many terms are there in that sequence or the sequence do not have the nth term so the example goes like this 
टू कामा फोर कामा सिक्स कामा एट कामा टेन कामा डाटा 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 सो दिस इंडिकेट्स द टर्म्स आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू फर्दर एंड फर्दर वी डू नॉट नो वेयर द सीक्वेंस इज गोइंग टू एंड एंड देयरफॉर वी डू नॉट नो द लास्ट टर्म और एंड टर्म ऑफ दिस सीक्वेंस सच टाइप ऑफ सीक्वेंसेस आर कॉल्ड एज इनफाइनाइट सीक्वेंसेस सो द जनरल फॉर्म ऑफ दिस इनफाइनाइट सीक्वेंस कैन बी टर्म एज ए1 ए2 A three, A four, A five, da 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 da. So here, what is the difference between a finite sequence and an infinite sequence? Is that in a finite sequence you will be having the nth term, and in an infinite sequence you do not have the nth term, or you are not aware that which is the last term. So that forms an infinite sequence. So this is the general form of an Infinite sequence. The sequence can be represented in two different ways. One by using its nth term, and another method is by writing the terms of the sequence. So once again, the sequence can be represented in two ways. One one method is by using its or writing its nth term, or by writing the terms of the sequence itself so in this concept i am going to teach you how we can write or what is the method follow to write the nth term of a sequence so now question arises sir why do we have to find out the nth term of a sequence what is the use of it? so after deriving the nth term of a particular sequence now i am going to tell you the advantages of writing the nth term of a sequence let us go with a simple example 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 comma 10 comma da 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 is a sequence so it's nothing but it's even numbers so even numbers pattern of even numbers is a sequence you know so here a1 is First, I have to get it. First, we write the rule. So, what is the rule here? What is the rule used? Write two and add two. Add two successively. Write two and add two successively is the rule followed in this pattern of sequence. Now, which is the first term? A one is the first term. So while getting the first term of this sequence, have you added any two, any two to the first term to get to? That's the question. So that that can be done as. So here, no two is added. No two is added to this first term. To get two, so that can be written as two plus one minus one into two. One minus one is zero. Zero into two is zero. Zero plus two is again the first term we get. Let us go in the second term. So that is two you are going to get. Let us go in the second term. Second term is four. How you got four in the sequence? Here. For the first term two, you have added two once. So therefore, you have got four. So that can be done as like this. So that becomes a two is equal to two plus two minus one into two. So we can check out two minus one is one. One into two is two. Two plus two is We are going to get the second term that is four. Let us get into the third term. The third term what you got is six. How you got six? For two, the first term we have added two times two. We have added two times two to get six. Let us check this. Two plus Two times two can be written as three minus one into two. Three minus one is two. 
to do some four. Four plus two is again you are going to get six. Let us go with fourth term. What we have got? So fourth term is eight here. Have you got eight? To the first term, you have added three times two to get eight. That's very simple. You can write it. For the first term two, you have added. Three times two, three times two can be written as four minus one into two. Four minus one is three. Three two is six. Six plus two is eight. This is how we have got the fourth term. Now I hope you have understood. You can easily write the fifth term now. So a five is equal to how we have you got the fifth term. So here to the first term you have added four times two to get. Ten. Let us check it out. So two plus that is first time first term plus four times you have added two that is five minus one into two that comes five minus one is four four two side is eight eight plus two is that is ten. So this is the pattern, right? How you get the terms of a given sequence. So using this order. We can write how the nth term of this sequence looks like. For example, a nth term of the sequence can be written as right. Every time we are writing the terms of the sequence, we have used the first term, and how many times two is added to the first term? So write two plus here. How many times two is added to the first term is divided by one minus one, two minus one, three minus one. Four minus one, five minus one. Now this becomes n minus one, where one, two, three, four, five are natural numbers and two continuous. So this is the general term of this sequence. So this can be made handy or simplified further. So a n is equal to two plus two into n, two n, two into minus one is minus two. Minus two plus two cancels, so a n is equal to two a n. This is the nth term of this sequence. So, using this nth term of the sequence, what is the advantage? That is, using this nth term, you can find out any term of the sequence. Any term. For example, so I want the twentieth term of this sequence. Here you can see first term, second term, third, fourth, fifth. Next comes six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, sixteen. Then comes twenty-eight. So we do not know the twenty-eight term of the sequence, but by using the nth term of any sequence, we can directly find out whichever term required in that sequence. For example, I need the twenty-eight term. So put n is equal to twenty. Two into twenty is forty. So the twentieth term in the sequence further becomes. Fourteen. The term is fourteen. So likewise, I can find out the fifth term. For example, I can see the fifth term, but using formula, I can find out if I want the fifth term, I have to put n is equal to five. So five is a ten. So fifth term is ten. So I want the third term. So two three is a six. Get the third term. So I want second term. Put n is equal to two. So two is a four. That is the second term we are going to get. So like this. By using the nth term of a sequence, you can find out the find out any term of the given sequence if required. Coming to the next example in the, the nth term of sequences, let us take another example: one comma four comma nine comma sixteen comma dot dot dot. So it is a sequence. So let us write the nth term of the sequence. So here, one can be written as One square, four can be written as two square, nine can be written as three square, sixteen can be written as four square, and so on. So here, one square, two square, three square, four square. Here, here it is one, two, three, four. It's a sequence of natural numbers which are square. So the nth term of the sequence can be written as a is equal to one, two, three, four indicates the natural number n. And they are square successively. Therefore, the nth term of the sequence is 
in square. So, a sequence can be denoted by or represented by two by two methods. One is by using the method of the sequence or just by writing the terms of the sequence. So, what is the advantage of writing the nth term of the sequence is that one, you can get any sequence or any particular term of that sequence by using its nth term and vice versa, if you know the nth term of a sequence, you can write the terms of the sequence. Let us try this. In a sequence, for example, in a, in a sequence, if a n is equal to 3 n minus 1, find sequence. So here we have some sequence, we do not, we do not know which is that sequence, but we know the nth term of that sequence denoted by a n is equal to 3 n minus 1. Can we find out the terms of that sequence? So it's very easy to find out the terms of the sequence. Take the nth term, a n is equal to 3 n minus 1, as I told you earlier, n indicates the term of the sequence because n is a natural number. So put n is equal to 1. So as you put n is equal to 1, this becomes a1 is equal to 3 e. So put n is equal to 1, so to 1 minus 1. So a1 is 3 minus 3 minus 1 is 2. The first term of the sequence is 2. So similarly, we can find out the second term of the sequence. So a n is equal to 3 n minus 1. Put n is equal to 2 because we have to find out the second term. Therefore, put n is equal to 2. So this becomes a2 is equal to 3 into 2 minus 1. So a2 is equal to 3 2s are 6 minus 1. So a2 is equal to 5. So in this sequence, the second term is 5. Similarly, we can find out the third term of the sequence. So write the nth term, a is equal to 3 minus 1. So 10 is equal to 3. So this becomes a3 is equal to 3 into substitute n as 3 minus 1. So a3 is equal to 3 is a 9 minus 1. So a3 is equal to 8. So this is the third term, so third term of the sequence. Right? So the first three terms of the sequence are given by 2 comma 5 comma 8. So these are the first three terms of this sequence. So by using the terms of the sequence, you can find out the nth term of the sequence and by using the nth term of the sequence, you can find out the terms of the sequence or any term which is required. For example, the 10th term or the 20th or 15th or, or 25th like that. So if in a sequence, if the nth term is given, you can find out the terms of the sequence. If the terms of the sequence are given, you can find out the nth term of the sequence. So, in the next session, I am going to give you some uh, homework where you have to do this. And what all the problems I have solved on the board, concepts that I have discussed, and uh, regarding this, I am going to give you the notes uh, which I am going to send you in PDF form uh, to your WhatsApp after the session is over. I hope you enjoyed the class. Uh, this class I will close it now by giving you homework. Uh, just you can take it down, uh, open a class book for that. Uh, maybe 200 pages ruled class book for that. Uh, write down the notes what I am going to send you in the WhatsApp and do the homework after writing the notes.